Well, about 10 days ended up being 10 years. As all the monks just were in silence and silence and silence. And one shed a tear. So I was going to also ask you, because you talk about karma with kind of question marks in your book. I think I'm like you too. Yes, I don't necessarily have to hear it. Um, But it's nice to know that. To see it, yeah. yeah, yeah. One by Rumni, and he said, only from the heart can you touch the sky. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy you picked this one. Are you truly happy or is there something missing? Oh my gosh. I'm Farah Shamas. Welcome to Hotel Talk. We hope you enjoy listening to this friendly conversation between people connected by real life in hotels. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Hotel Talk. And today we will be talking about everything and anything that is not connected with hotels. Today, my guest is Thalys Banaidis, who is the author of Odyssey to the Heart, an absolutely incredible book, um, really talking about philosophy, mindset, the journey of life and really awakening and so much more. And Thalys is here to walk us through that and tell us what he does and who he is. And I'm going to start off with the question, first of all, welcoming Thales. But I asked him before we went live, how do you want to be introduced? And he was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so welcome, Thales, and thank you so much for being here. Well, first of all, thank you for having me here, Farah. appreciate that very much. I um, find that when someone asks me what I do and who I am, I find that to be perhaps the most difficult question to ask. Uh, If you ask my daughters, I'm daddy, baba. If you ask my friends, I'm bro. Uh, If you ask my wife, sometimes it may be (laughs) arabimu. On a good day. (laughs) On a good day. So there are various roles that we play throughout Mm -hmm. the day, but over the years, I've had a tendency to shed or at least not identify so strongly with those roles. So today, as I feel it now, I am this kind of loving awareness of this experience now. Lovely. That's so nice. I know I always answer the same when people say, yeah, what do you do or who are you? And then I tend to always roll into the what I do, but that's not who I am. And I always end with, well, my most important role is I'm a mom. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. So, yeah. So tell us a little bit about you then, um, where you grew up, uh, a little bit about your early, earlier years in life. What led you to Cyprus? I know you've had quite a journey yourself. So let's kind of summarize it for people who don't know you. Okay. Um, or they, or even people who do, you, because we want them to learn something good, new. Good. I'll try to give you the short version of the past 57 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was born in the States, uh, moved to Cyprus when I was 10, attended the grammar school, and then later went to study in the States, earned my master's degree in business, and uh, ended up being getting several interviews in New York City on Wall Street, which was, you know, the epitome of success for any MBA student. And I had all the goals and ambitions and dreams of becoming success based on our metrics, Western metrics. Mm-hmm. And uh, luckily... My uncle said, hey, why don't you go see your cousin who's in Brazil? And uh, I said, okay, I'll go for a couple of weeks and then head back to the States. Well, about 10 days ended up being 10 years. Wow. <laughs> and during those 10 years, uh, of course, I married. Two daughters were born in Brazil and uh, speak fluent Portuguese. And out of Brazil, we're born two online businesses. Uh, So I currently operate two websites. One is a swimwear 
uh, business and the other one is a fitness wear business. And they have been serving me for over 20 years now. So I could say that I'm almost one of the first or pioneers on on e-commerce for, among Cypriots, per mm-hmm. se. That is, um, I don't know what it's like to commute to work and attend meetings. And um, so I feel very grateful because of that. And um, so that has been today and still is my my business and then brewing in the background is has always been this um, curiosity about life um, my friends say oh here comes to least the philosopher <laughs> or something that I've always wondered about people and psychology and trying to understand you know what is this all about and I guess I took a, a deeper dive in the past five or six years, more than ever, from personal development to uh, to spiritual development. And what I mean, what I found, at least for me personally, that uh, uh, spiritual development was personal development on steroids. Uh, so it was so much more powerful. Uh, at least it resonated with me and uh, so I I love that I just want to repeat that again spiritual development is personal development on steroids right what a brilliant quote and uh, and so I started reading uh, all the great gurus sages teachers uh, uh, that have a tendency to have a universal and common thing among all three of among many others that I I really have really impacted me deeply are Eckhart Tolle, uh, Rupert Spira, and Moji. And what I, uh, they put into words what I, I sensed and felt intuitively, but couldn't articulate it in those words. So when I began reading their works and, and studying them and, and listening to them, I kept on, yes, this is it. That's how it is. Everything fell in place. Things, uh, the way the world operated seemed to be, to become so much more clear for me. And um, and now I've been living on this high ever since. <laughs> okay, it's not quite like that. But uh, certainly this burden that we often carry, the psychological burden we carry has been diminished and, and is so subtle, at least for me, it's so much more remote or in the background. It's a uh, secondary purpose of my life. And the primary purpose is more this energies, these feelings mm. like the vibes I'm getting from Farah, the way she's looking, she's smiling, people around me. And that I just feed off of that now. Mm. You know, I could care less what they do, where they're from. Uh, in fact, when I meet people now, I tell them, you know, no need to tell me, you know, what you do or what you used to do and where you want to go. Just, just show me, you know, give me everything you have now with me now. You know, that's all that matters. And um, so I don't know if I answered your question. You did, I went you off did. The rant there. But I'm going to dive deeper. <laughs> okay. Where did this all stem from? Like, you know, there's many people okay. who go through life okay. and they don't have that awakening. Okay. They don't have that need or that draw. Um, A lot of people, it's something sudden that happens in their life, a shock. But for many others, they're just born with this depth. You know, that's why there's this expression, old souls. Old souls, okay. So where do you fall into that spectrum and why did that drive come out? Okay, I can account for it that it was a gradual uh, transition uh, as you know, there are two ways to to get a sense of this deeper inner self that, that we all have. And one is the direct method, and the one is the indirect method. The mm. indirect method could be <clears throat> usually a trauma in your life, a, di- a painful divorce, financial ruin, uh, or you've been diagnosed with a disease. That will shock your entire belief system. And it could be um, the breakthrough that you need to destroy all your projections. And 
if you are able to let go of those projections, then you see the beauty everywhere. Absolutely. I, mean, I get goosebumps. Now, that's the indirect method. We all probably have a bit of that or have experienced a bit of that. For me, though, it, again, has been the gradual studying and readings of works. And I knew that something was going on where I became so much more sensitive and overwhelmed, like in a way, like ecstatic with, you know, simple things, the, the tree, the grass on, on, your, on the lawn, the bird, hey, I can hear a bird or, wow, a bird. You know, I can't remember being a young adult and say, wow, look at that beautiful bird. Yeah. And so I find myself doing this much, much more. And it clicked for me. Truly that, okay, I think something truly is happening and it's a, in a good way. And that's when I read a passage in The New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. And he writes about the silent sermon. And if you read the book or for those who did, they may recall a, a, a monk with his gathering of pupils and it was prayer time and the, the prayer was a silent prayer, okay? Yet the, the senior monk there held a lotus flower and just held it as all the monks just were in silence and silence and silence. And one shed a tear. And that monk is the one who understood the meaning of the prayer. To, that is to see the beauty, the intense beauty that is surrounding us, despite events unfolding, maybe not as we had planned for them, but to know that on a deeper level, uh, inherent in all of us, at any time, anywhere, is a sense of peace and a sense of joy. That's yours and oh, your taking. core essence. Yeah. You, you mentioned that in your book. I loved, um, I was telling my husband about it actually, the, the fisherman who went asked, did you catch anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, no, but I caught more than, more than fish. Than you'll ever. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. And the, the, the young man said, or the older man said, well, what do you mean by that? And, and it was however many sunsets I've seen. Sorry, not sunsets, sunrises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen all these sunrises. And, and, he, and if I can, if I remember, yeah. I said, and he said, well, um, y you have time. Mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, you have money. I have time. time. Who's richer? Absolutely. And that left the the businessman a bit stumbled. A bit, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then also for me, what was quite that resonated in that passage was that the businessman then said, "Oh, I, I think I've only ever seen yeah. a, less than a dozen yeah. sunrises in my whole life," but this simple fisherman got the wealth of seeing these sunrises exactly. every day. Exactly. Um, and it's so true. And I don't know, I'd, lo I'd love your opinion on this. I mean, I see it with my children who are still quite young. And maybe also with me, I really try and get them to appreciate nature and, and just natural beauty around us and simple things, which doesn't always work with iPads and everything else around. But I think they are quite attuned to it. However, and then I see older people, or when I was growing up, my mother was very much like, oh, you know, anything. Like, look how nicely they yes. made that salad. Yes. You know, yes. wow, someone yes. put in a lot of effort. Or yes. look at the design of that dress. Isn't that beautiful? Anything. Or, exactly. you know, look at the tree and the blossoms were out. And every time we went to school, it was to admire the rhododendrons. But as a kid, we were like, oh, okay, whatever, Ma. I don't know if at some point in the in the middle, maybe as a child, you appreciate this when you've got that innocence, or they call it the indigo child. And then as when you're older, maybe through a shock in your life or just a gradual development, you go back to appreciating. And it's somewhere in the middle that a lot of people get lost, either with their drive for success or wealth exactly. or exactly. status or whatever it is. Um, so what would your take be on that? My take on on, on whether on, it's on also children and older, and it's in the middle that we get lost. Okay, uh, I think we all evolve. At at everyone has their moments, and and it's sad when you don't see that when 
that, hey, take advantage of this moment now, mm. but they're not ready for it. And there was this pastor, I remember he spoke on um, one of these Oprah events, and he was talking about, you know, sometimes we're born in a family with people who have a container of eight liters f fuel of capacity to love and give. But then there's you who were born from one way or another with 10 liters of capacity to love. And you just, you're telling who your brother or sister, whoever it is, hey, step it up, come to 10. But they're giving their they're max all. at eight. Yeah, at, they're giving it their all. And really the onus is on us to extend compassion and empathy and, and simply like, Poor person, you know, they're at eight when they could be at 10. Um, so, Farah, to answer yeah. your question, it's it's not a, a black or white. It's it's patience. It's hoping that their level of consciousness as a re result of self-inquiry or the indirect method I mentioned will raise their level of consciousness. Um, but as you do, as you gradually do, and you get a taste, as mm. Moji say, of the nectar, you don't want to go back. <laughs> Absolutely. And as you said, it's that empathy. Yeah. It's that understanding. You have a whole chapter yeah. in your book on empathy. Um, yeah. I I think I get taught a lot by my kids and just appreciating Absolutely. that innocence. Yeah. Um, and I'll share a story with you, if I may, um, which always, I mean, just resonated with me and my husband. And we were driving home one day to our new home that we just finished building. And very close to our house, there's a quite an opulent house that's kind of high up and, um, you know, with columns and stone outside and um, very prominent. And we were referring to it as Cinderella's house uh, because it's just, it looks like this yeah, castle kind of. Yeah. And we were saying, oh, you know, Cinderella, Cinderella's place or we, we live just before Cinderella's place. And then um, Yasmina said, oh, is, is Cinder does Cinderella live there? We said, no, 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 it's someone else's, it's the style. So she said, well, are you laughing at, at their house? Oh. And, um, we, and then I said, no, yes, we know, we're not, but it's just a joke between daddy and I. We're not, we're not saying it to anybody else. And then she said to me, yeah, but mummy, it doesn't matter if you're saying it to anyone else or not. You're still wow. making fun in a way wow. of this person's home. And then she proceeded to say, and she said, you know, mummy, that's someone else's dream. It might not be your dream, but that's someone else's dream and they built that house. And so it's not like nice to laugh at anyone's dream. Wow. Whatever it is. Wow, the, the maturity and the maturity. of And she was only about age. six when she said this. Incredible. And wow. until now, I'm like, and I yeah. tell her thank you because yeah. you teach me so much. That's um, a beautiful story. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. So children, if you listen, um, and my youngest... Whenever we're driving anywhere, she'll look at trees. She's so sweet. I haven't corrected her yet because I think it's too cute. She doesn't say beautiful. She says beautifully. And she says, Mommy, look at the flowers. They're so beautifully today. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's beautifully. Beautifully. Cute. So, yeah, it is. I think it is really important to nurture that in children and try and keep that with them, Absolutely, yeah. that inquest, rather than to let it all just pan into the grades and the results and the money and right. the success right. in. Right. Right. So... Tell us a little bit more about your book. It's called Odyssey to the Heart. Actually, when I looked it up on Amazon, um, there's a lot. There's other ones that are called, I think, Odyssey in the Heart. Oh, there's there's okay. a two that have a similar name, but not okay. yours is the only Odyssey to the Heart. To the Heart. Obviously, your Greek origin, Odysseus, was a very famous voyager, and that poem I studied classics is such an amazing by Homer. I mean core of yeah. our, our very being and civilization <laughs> right, right. so it's very apt that you chose that but maybe explain a little bit why did you call it odyssey to the heart um, and why did you choose a train as a mode of transportation in this interesting book? question i think uh in retrospect i may have chose 
chose a different mode of transport nowadays, you know. <laughs> because, well, I like you the know, train. Not but, that many people yeah. travel the train, at least not in Cy- <laughs> Cyprus. But people are getting on and off. I don't know if uh, that's why, because if that, you chose yes, a plane, it, it would have been hard as land. It was convenient for, yeah, a bus maybe. For yeah. because uh, every chapter, you know, there are passengers who mm-hmm. get off the train and on, and each one shares a story of a wisdom dispenses uh, a beautiful story to the passenger who is on there for the long run. Uh, the journey, in a way, is um, is like this uh, hero's journey where you 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 go to conquer and achieve something and you come back uh, not necessarily richer with treasures but a new insight about yourself richer in your heart uh, richer yeah. in your heart and and when you catch a glimpse of how fulfilling that is that it's in your it's your core nature your essence that that is enough and you f- feel full, then it just takes this burden off of us to acquire more, do more, be more, which um, which is good and not necessarily bad. I want to make that very clear. Yes, plan, set plans and goals and achieve and aspire and dream, yes. But always be conscious and be aware of well, the intention and never stray too far from from the most beautiful treasure of all. As Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven lies within. And for most of our life, that falls on deaf ears. Well, a kingdom of heaven, a kingdom of paradise within, like where? Is there a button? You know, uh, some of my friends say, you know, what are you feeling? How do I get some of this? Um, well, I'm not taking any mushrooms, I joke. <laughs> but um, um, Mo- Moji said this beautiful quote. He said, um, the, the nectar, uh, the fragrance of, of a flower, everyone can smell. Uh, wisdom, empathy, love, compassion. But nobody has found the origin you can smell it but you just like where you can't touch it you know Mm. and that's why for many it's like a lifelong journey of you know where is this it's not north it's not south it's not in india um so so yeah the book was sorry no i'm like was it in your book that there was a story about when you reach like the highest goal of spirituality Mm. you're gonna See the flower, see the beauty, smell it, and be content uh, to um, leave it absolutely. there. Well, well, we, yes, it's, 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 I'm yes, remembering. Yeah. I think you are. <laughs> okay, so it's not, it's not a quote from someone else. Yes, but uh, I remember it was well, so beautiful. Well, like, yeah, you, yeah. You, you you're content to yes, see that flower yeah. there, not pick it. You're not trying exactly. to take it yeah, home. Yeah, you're not yeah, trying yeah, to ruin yeah, it. Yeah, um, you just leave it there for someone else. Because, there. because Farah, uh, as uh, Osho said, to see the beauty in a rose is easy. To see the beauty in a thorn, in the thorn of the rose, requires great wisdom. So it's being able to to transcend the noise, the chaos of the world, and seeing that behind it all, there is music. Behind the pandemics and the wars and the earthquakes and the abuse, that there is something so beautiful but you're so focused on, you know, what's affecting you on a psychological level and you fail to to grasp it. There's something deeper than that. And so transcend that. And I think in a way, this is our lifelong journey to be mm-hmm. able to transcend the noise and tap into that deeper dimension, um, which is ma- mostly the theme of the book. Yeah. And, so that's the odyssey to the heart, the that, reason. That is. I love that. Where did you collect all the stories from? Because each paragraph nearly has like a different story and a different theme and a different character or a different reference. So 
Is that a combination of your life? It is. Time? Uh, I have, I guess, one of the best habits, if you may, that I've acquired in my life is the habit of journaling. And I've been doing this since my early 20s. So every day, it might be something I saw or heard or even this interaction with you, Farah. I'll go home and write, you know, <laughs> I love that story she shared. Met this about really her, annoying her person daughter. on the podcast. No, not at all. <laughs> so uh, I've accumulated, you know, literally thousands of pages over the years. And, um, and I'm so grateful because it also helped, I guess, improve my writing and... Uh, articulate what I, my thoughts verbally mm -hmm. in a better way. So this uh, habit of, of write, journaling, I would so say. So you collected, collected lots of stories and stories quotes and ideas. From everywhere, uh, common people in the street, uh, everywhere, anything. I remember, for example, a quote, and this was in uh, like 30 years ago, and it was an, a magazine called The Reader's Digest, if mm -hmm. you remember yeah. this. And... This journalist asked Elizabeth Taylor uh, what she thought about having her jewelry stolen. And she was very big into diamonds, yeah. a very wealthy woman. And her reply was so profound that I, <laughs> that I use it everywhere with a lot of my friends too. And she told the reporter, I don't cry for things that don't cry, cry for me. This, I, this is... So deep, so, so deep, you know. So material things will give you that brief mm. hit, that brief, uh, you know, kick high, you know, the caffeine high. It'll give it to you, but it can't sustain it. Mm -hmm. And so. Yeah. And also, I think with all of these things, I mean, that's how at least my father always brought me up. They're there to be enjoyed for however long. And you don't know for how long. Exactly. You don't know how long you're going to be here. Exactly. So there's no point. You know, buy, I mean, I love jewelry as well, but there's no point having it and then it being in a bank and you don't touch it and you're yeah. just so obsessed with how much it costs, which exactly. I know many people are constantly, this costs. Yes. No, you have it, you wear it, you enjoy exactly. it. Exactly. And then maybe you don't want it anymore. Maybe, you know, if you forget about it, maybe whatever, but you've enjoyed it for that time. Exactly. And that's, yeah, nothing materialistic stays forever and it shouldn't. It's, what, it's the feelings that are left there. I love that. So I just mentioned my father. What has being a father taught you? Because you I also I remember in our mutual friend Walid's um, uh, a Mindex event that we were both speakers at, yeah. you mentioned a story with your daughters that's also in your book. Um, so I know that that's obviously left a profound impact on your life, being a daddy to two girls. So what's that taught you or helped you see? Oh, it taught me, and I mean this seriously and half-jokingly, to be even more patient. <laughs> oh my God, I couldn't agree more. The amount of patience you need as a parent. <laughs> to be patient. And, uh, you know, the first words uh, in the Corinthians is love is patience. You know, it's the very first word. Mm -hmm. And um, and so definitely patience. And as you said, that I learn as much from them as they do from me. And what I've noticed is that sometimes I may think it, what I do and say falls on deaf ears, but it's being recorded in them somehow and will flower blossom at some point, I hope, yeah. later down the road. So, um, yeah, so when they see daddy, you know, exercising, swimming, you know, because they're not as, you know, I, I want them to be more physically active, for example. I know that, you know, them seeing me going out yeah, every day, they, you, know, hey, you know, so at some point I hope it will become uh, a part of their life. Too. Yeah. 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 Oh Good my goodness. That, I'll share you another, uh, share with you another story. Now this yeah. one about my son to be fair to all my children and mention them all. So my, uh, yeah, my son, we were also in the car chatting. So we do most of our chats, I think on the school runs. And um, I can't remember what the conversation was, but I said something about, yes, you, you know, you must always be kind and, and love each other or love, I don't know, someone. And then my son said, yes, but I, I will love myself more. And I said, oh, where did that come from? This is not what you told us, mommy, ah. <laughs> that we have to love ourselves the most. Yes, yes. And I was like, wow, he remembered okay. this comment I'd said, you know, yes. I don't know how many months before. 
And I said, actually, yes. I didn't say to be selfish, yes. but I did say to always take care of yourself, always love yourself, appreciate exactly. yourself. And he said, yeah, that's what I'm going to do, mommy. I will love myself the most. I'll take care of myself. And then I'm going to love everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, it went in some way. I had to tweak it a bit, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, funny, the things they uh, say. Eckhart Tolle said, uh, take care of the inside mm -hmm. and, the inside, and the outside will take care Every of itself. itself. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Take care of the pennies and the pounds will take care of itself. Yeah. 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 An evolution of that phrase. So you mentioned um, Christianity a lot, the church. How important is your religion to you? Well, my grandfather was a priest, in fact, in Cyprus. Okay. And my mom was a very religious, uh, but also spiritual person. Mm. And there is a distinction. Um Spiritual is universal yeah. uh, for everybody. But I would like to think that all religions point in the same direction and to the one thing, which is love at the mm. end of the day. Uh, they, they use different words and have different stories and narratives. But uh, if you follow the message to the last drop, that drop, Mm -hmm. is all love yeah. and um and so i hope that everybody you know they can squeeze this nectar and get this little drop of love and when they do it's just everything everything appears to them beautifully um mm -hmm. because Farah, if we are depending on external environment on the external environment to affect our well-being and state of being then we're, we have a, raw, a very big challenge, you know? Mm. If you are depending on everything to go right, financially, relationships, health, at all times, at every day, every, every day of the week, month, just one <clears throat> category to be off destroys everything else, mm -hmm. right? You, you had a very bad situation with an employee, you're going to go home. It's going to, you know, it's going to be hard to switch. Yeah. So, and the ripple effects of ripple that. Effects. Yeah. So that's, that's all on the surface. So there's something deeper. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, yeah, also an important lesson. We, we can't control everything that happens, can't control, exactly. but we can control our reactions to it and how we, how we view it. Exactly. And then if you do that and just bring yourself back to the present and it's easier Definitely. Exactly. The Buddhist religion also says we're all rivers leading to the same ocean or religion. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. absolutely. Um, so I was going to also ask you, because you talk about karma with kind of question marks in your book. Do you believe in karma? That's a very good question. And I think about karma often because there are some who str strongly oppose it and don't yeah. believe it. Uh, my take is I do believe that uh, your life, uh, if your level of um, consciousness is low, the vibrations that you're giving out in the world are constantly low, it's going to be reflected back at you, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, people who vibrate with love, compassion, they're not drawn into this ener negative mm -hmm. energy, so they're they're less likely to to be affected in the future with something negative. What I mean, I, I didn't re reply accurately. I'm trying to make sure you're right. <laughs> um, before I, I, before I, you get all, I, I don't, do, don't want to use the word Bible bashes, but people calling you after is like, what did karma? You? It, there's ego attached to karma because oh. He's bad and it's going to come back or she mm. is going to come back. There's a bit of ego. Why yeah. Why would you wish or hope um, something comes back as someone who did you wrong, for example? Yeah. So it is what it is. We we could tie, we mm -hmm. could make this connection. We we witness, I, I, I'm sure both of us mm. often witness karma like, wow, there you go. Karma. Yeah. Um, but I joke with people who like who do good deeds and like uh, you just got some karma credit. You know, I say yeah. that to people. Oh, you get some karma credit. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> and I guess it's just a basic law of attraction, isn't it? Mm. I mean, when you're when you're a negative person focusing on negative mm. feelings and emotions, then you're just going to attract exactly. people and it, circumstances exactly. that are also like that. Even natural ones. I mean, yeah, I, I know so many examples of things going wrong for some people. I don't wish it for them. Right. But then I'm like, well, you know, every day they're yeah. just negative. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. positive people, yes, not everything goes right all the time, mm -hmm. but they they end up, you know, being in good places more often than not true. and in good, yeah, Absolutely circumstances true. in their life. So, yeah, in that respect there is. But, yes, and then we go a bit more into the evil eye where people are like, evil eye, yeah. you know, and then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So empathy and kindness. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but we're our, our um, hashtag at St. Raphael Resort is radiate kindness. Um, oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, wow, so we're nice, very nice. much for kindness that's here. A good one. I think that's our philosophy that has always kind of been our underlying core of of our hotel, being 100% family owned. This hotel one. started off, I mean, we're on our 36th year now. But um, you know, yeah, imagine. And my grandfather wanted to build the hotel for many reasons, but one of them was to, you know, employ the local community to give back. He was also very religious, same um, religious philosophies being Greek Orthodox here. And he really wanted to build up the community. So again, we're wow. back to hotel talk and connect people and have a base for his family. Um, so kindness is really important to us. And of course, empathy, you talk a lot about. I'm also... Um, really a very big believer in being empathic so yeah I don't know to tie the two together do you have any more thoughts you've got a whole chapter in your book of empathy how important do you think that is and sorry and then I've also written down here tolerance and how can you be more tolerant to people who are not even close to being there yet who are negative and who are just maybe irritating well, uh, like how do you yeah. not let that affect you it it takes practice. Right. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Tol tolerance is is a strong word because it means like you're having to put up with yes. someone. Yeah, but uh, I tend to be patient with people and uh, not draw any conclusions or have any expectations of people. Mm. In fact, Very, yeah, I had this interesting conversation just yesterday with a friend and. I told her that I I get along with just about everybody and I don't have, and because I don't have high expectations from anybody. However, the person I chose to marry and love is is the one that is also the uh, source of a bit of pre of a of pressure in the relationship, and the reason is Farah, because I have expectations from my partner. So it that is my practice. So that is my work to do, because recognizing that I have set these expectations. My work is to mm -hmm. diminish them, and when I when they when I do, it will flourish even more, and and so I think um, a lot of the stress and tension in in mm. most of our day to day interactions with people is because um, we set these expectations, and I know, for example, um, a friend so well, I can I of course I demand from them this and this and that. Well, then as long as you demand A, B, C from them, you'll continue to s feel this tension in you, this bitterness, this having to tolerate. What a way to live, having to tolerate with the person in front of you, to put up with them. That's not a good way to live your life. So practice to be more patient. Um, reduce your expectations if you can. <laughs> that's why I've been saying that for years with one yeah. of my closest friends who you might also know Kareem about the key is not to have expectations Excellent. and it's much yeah. easier said than done though um, I was recently very very disappointed from what, a close friend we have got over it and I realised wow the whole reason I was so yeah upset was because of this subconscious expectation that 
they yeah. fell short of. Exactly. Yeah, and and hurt hurt me in a way that they didn't intend to. But um, yeah, we did get over it. But it's so true. Expectations are expectations. Um, yeah, and then the other thing that my husband calls me out on quite a lot, but. I think when when there are people who I, I'm just very different from, or to, yeah, to use a strong word, tolerate, uh -huh. I don't have to tolerate them, but I equally don't expect them to really like yeah, me. I'm fine yeah, with not yeah, being yeah. loved by everyone, so I just remove myself. Right. I'm like, we don't need to be, right. you know. Yeah. And so I also have that quite a bit. I just think, you know, it's nice to get along with everyone, but it's not expected. It's not realistic. True. Sure. There's different people. Maybe some people don't like how I look. Maybe some people, and that's fine. But mm. then we don't have to pretend. I think there's so much superficiality yes. in the modern world. And um, I think, we, I, I don't know, because here we're obviously this microcosm in Cyprus. So everything is emphasized so much more than maybe in bigger places. And I would imagine even more so for you on your role and position. My gosh. Yeah. Well, it's, I just <laughs> it's find it quite funny. I just, yeah. I've always just been me um, unapologetically. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm who I am yeah. and, you know, and yeah. And you come across like that. I sent you an email this morning. You, you come, you come across so authentic Thank and you. you have good vibes. People feel comfortable around you. And um, so Thank whatever you so you're much. doing, Thank you. continue doing but that. But some people don't you know? like it, you know. I mean, I've, I've been stopped randomly and people have told me, oh, you know, you do all your lives on Instagram and Facebook promoting veganism. or the, They're like, you look so pretty with makeup on. You really shouldn't come on, you know, without makeup. Or, um, and then I'm like, no, but that is me. Like, yeah, you know, and I'm not that like, bad, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's your point? <laughs> like, um, you know. Yeah, or you go to a party and you see people, it's like this sweating game, who's going to break and say hi to the other one first? And it's very tiring and I it, it does make me laugh and I think yeah. you've just got to have a lot of humour yes. with it yes. when faced with, yeah, yes. this type of, yeah, thing. So let's, yeah, on that note of veganism, you're quite into your healthy living, aren't you? And I try to be, yeah. I try to be, uh, more so on the fitness side. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about fitness and the importance of holistic well-being. Okay. Well, for me, it's probably not so much for the health reasons, but because the way it makes me feel. Uh, I like cycling, running, swimming. It's it's like one long meditation, and like when I go out for two, a two or three hour bike ride that's three hours of meditation being connecting with you know earth mm -hmm. nature, and nature and yourself and i see it in no way as oh my gosh i have to train or oh it, it's it's so a part of my life as like when we take a shower you, you know oh my god i have to take a shower again you know you just habitually mm -hmm. you do it as a mm -hmm. part of your life so when fitness becomes a part of your life, not even a habit. It's ingrained. It's a way of living, a way of being because of the way it makes you feel and not because, oh, I'm going to live longer or yes, I might die uh, younger and, and all those other reasons. It's not to lose weight or anything. It's just, I feel great. I feel amazing. Mm. In fact, I, I tell my wife, uh, as soon as I come back from an exercise, that is the best time to ask me for something <laughs> you, know, you want to go out for dinner we'll go out for Let's dinner because it, you know? yeah. it's just it just feels so good yeah um, it's so, a lot of vitamin uh, l vitamin love yes <laughs> yeah oh that's so nice we spoke uh, yeah. on so many things and yeah, yeah. have you read the five love languages oh you talk Deanna about, mentioned yeah, that yeah it's book. really oh, i'm trying yeah, to think yeah. of the um, was it Wayne Dyer? no it, no, yeah. no yeah. of the name of the author but um Do dr chapman that's it. Okay. Yeah, and he also um, talks about it slightly differently, but this um, uh, oh, canister, I want to say, but tank, tank, the love, tanks, love tanks, and it's all about filling up. And when people, their love tanks are not full, then that's when they feel low self-esteem, they feel exactly. underappreciated, they start feeling negative. But he speaks about it all. I loved what you said that some people have the capability of 10 and some have mm -hmm. eight. Mm -hmm. In his case, he talks about everyone has a different language that fills that up oh yes so yes, you know some true. people it's the act of giving so it's presence 
So whether that's, you know, small things I bought you, I picked up this flower for you, I thought of you on my business trip and I got a magnet, I, and that fills them up. Other people, it might be just to hold their hand or give them a cuddle while you're watching Netflix or the exactly. sense of touch. Exactly. Someone else, it's words of reassurance. And may I ask yeah. which ones are yours? Oh, goodness, interesting. Um, I think I'm uh, deeds, acts of service, deeds, yeah. So You're I need, yes. Yeah, so, um, I mean, okay, don't get me wrong. Everybody loves a diamond ring. <laughs> my husband's listening to this. But no, but that's not my, um, I'm joking now. Um, yeah, I think definitely it's, yeah, that help. Like, I'll, I'll be there for you. I'll support you. Um, yeah, I'll help. So that I think okay. that's probably, okay. yeah, that, that appreciation. Um, I think the words are lovely to hear them, but I, uh, for me personally, I'm okay. I, I'm okay. quite good at giving myself that self worth right, and right. reassuring myself. But it's right. having someone actually next to you being there. Yeah. What would you say? I yours? think I'm like you too. Yes. Yeah. I don't necessarily have to hear it, um, but it's nice to know that. To see you know, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I know you were busy, so I'll go and pick up the kids or I know oh, you're yeah, busy, exactly, so I'll help exactly, with, yeah. Exactly. And just knowing that someone's just there. Just knowing, exactly. Just knowing that someone's got your back. Yeah. That's well said. That's, yeah, exactly. You said so many quotes. Do you have another one you'd like to share with us? Well, you did ask me prior yeah, to Yeah, to get one ready. I said, oh my gosh, I have so, so many. So which one or two am I going to dispense, yeah. you know? <laughs> Please, <laughs> come on. Let's have loads. I love well, it. Uh, two, uh, two very, very profound quotes, at least, that appeal so much to me right now where I am in life is one by Rumney, and he said, only from the heart can you touch the sky. And this is so profound because um, putting the lens of love, you know, wearing the lens of love and allowing love to flow from within you outwardly, mm. then everything is going to be reflected back to you equally as love as beautiful mm. and, and even the darkness because you ha you you shine so much light the presence of darkness is very difficult to surface yeah. when, when you're when very overwhelmed never i love that so that's that's one of them the second one is by papaji and papaji comes from the indian lineage of many other gurus his guru was uh, maharaji and um and so he said, he said, whatever comes, Farah, let it come. What stays, let it stay. And what goes, let it go. Let me kind of help offer some clarity to what does this mean. This means acceptance above all. Because you can't change what already is. Mm -hmm. Now, people will argue, but Thalisa, am I to accept that I am in a, an abusive relationship? The first thing is, yes, you accept that you are in one because only after you accept it, then you, you can let it, go. let it go. Exactly. You can approach or alleviate and remove yourself from the situa situation from a non-toxic um, energy using, you know, empathy, forgiveness, moving on, I'm over, but without fighting it, without resisting it, without, uh, because people get into situations and say, I'm, I'm going to re get revenge, you know, so it, it's not the way to go and you're not going to sleep well at night and there's this constant s source of stress within you, tension. Mm -hmm. So acceptance is letting your, letting your body to relax and allowing this universal intelligence to help you get a, out of the situation you're in. Mm-hmm. Hope I don't know if the audience is. Uh, like, I love it. I think so because it's so this different. This guy is talking about stuff I don't ah, understand. What's he on? No, I love it. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, that reminded me of that other of another saying, which is, "If you love someone, let them go." 
Um, if they come back, yeah. you've always had them. And if yeah. they don't come back, you never had them in the first place. Exactly. That's a good yeah. One, yeah. And also just being, you know, very few people come into your life for a reason, a season, and very few a lifetime. Exactly. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a good and so, and then, too. but whatever they're, however long they're in your life for, there's a reason, you know, and there's then you take reason. that reason and, and hold it close. So, exactly. yeah. Oh my goodness. So many sayings are coming up now and I love it. There's, it's just brilliant. Um, I know you're very good friends with Michael Virardi. He's also been on indeed, this podcast. Indeed, I saw that. And the train actually won um, a quote, um, which goes back to your book and using this metaphor of a, of a train to go through life. Claire Simeou, who was on this podcast, also said about a train that people get on and off. Oh, okay. And then you can enjoy, okay. you know, those people and it's the ones that stay with you to the end. Okay. But everybody's, yeah, she's enjoyed everyone's company. I love it. Let's go for the bonus question. Oh, so my God. So this is a bonus question. So, yeah, oh, so God. everybody gets asked a bonus question. And okay. our team at the hotel all... All get to write a question. They don't know who's going to pick it. And do I get to ask you a bonus question? Oh, my goodness, you can, we actually. Can reverse Let's do it. that. Let's do that. So I'll read that. Okay. Oh, oh, I get yeah. to? Uh, yeah, 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 that's I'll the one. That one. That's one. the one. Okay. So let's see. This one's typed. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is a This is idea. fun. Actually, some of them are philosophical, <laughs> but this is not. What is the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Oh my gosh, the weirdest thing the weirdest I've thing. ever eaten. <laughs> can we, can I pick another can one? You get another, uh, you can, but I let's can't think. See, weird. The weirdest thing. First of all, that's a weird question. It okay? is. I don't know who asked that question, whoever, whoever it is, one of our team. The weirdest thing you've ever eaten. I'll have to pass. And you don't, you've never eaten I can't, anything weird? I can't think of something exotic or something not exotic. Where... It might just be Marmite. Uh, or... <laughs> I, I, I guess or like, an eel, if you, you may, know. an eel. The, an the eel, eel, yeah. Yeah, an eel's a bit weird. It's like a, a snake yeah, in the sea. So, pretty yeah, gross. an eel. I think okay. most people don't, yeah. Do you want to pick another one? I want to pick profound. one for you. I want you to pick oh one. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, okay, right. I can't believe this. We're like swapping roles. Okay. There you go. Shall I read it or yeah, you read it? You it read is. it. Let's swap it. What is your favorite song ever, Farah? My favorite song ever. Um, mm. Oh, goodness. I think I, I've just got too many to pick one. Um, I So I'm a massive, shocking, I think for people who didn't know me in my younger days, but a uh, Guns N' Roses fan. So that would be, yeah, probably Sweet Child of Mine would come up um, for that. But then um, oh, I also Sweet love Child country like music. And, you love um, country yeah. music? I would not yeah, have guessed so, that. Um, there's one, um, I think, yeah, that's very deep. Um, oh, who sings it? And it's um, I Believe Most People Are Good. Ooh, and the that. and the the I lines want, are. I want to write that I'll one send down. it to you. Okay. Yeah, and it's, I believe most people are good, and most mothers ought ought to qualify for sainthood. Who um, sings it, by the way? And oh, I can't remember now. I'll look. I'll put the. Okay. They'll put it in the show Country notes. Music. And oh. um, yeah, and it's just to make the most of life, and yeah, and just be positive and see the good in people. See so I love that song. Whenever I'm feeling a bit, I'll put it on and be in my car. Yeah. But there's lots. I mean, there's so many. And Ed Sheeran, I mean, from the Ed newer Sheeran, artists. Yes, he's amazing yes, and just so deep. I and too. I think if you know a bit of his story, it's really. But there's just amazing songs. I really appreciate music in general. Yeah. What's yours? Mine is, well, you know, I grew up in the 80s, late 80s. So at the time, Michael Jackson. I was going to say Madonna, was huge, Michael Jackson, Madonna. And Prince. And Prince. So I think Billie Jean is Billie one Jean. of my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mostly for, you know, the tune, but also the memories that, that See, come Billie up. Billie Jean, uh, a bit of trivia. Billie Jean uh, was on like, weeks and weeks at number one and then was finally knocked off by Come, Come, Come On Eileen. Oh. Yeah. And so it was a massive. What was that? Uh, Come on, Eileen. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's that, a bit of trivia that, that I remember. So, not a great song to be knocked yeah, off. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. It, it's a catchy, it's a catchy so tune. There you go, yeah. some trivia from yeah. the 80s. 
You had Asimenos on, I think. I did, DJs, yes, yeah. I know. So did you do the whole the Caribbean disco yeah, scene? Yeah, yeah, he spoke about it a lot. Oh, and then he wow. started reminiscing about things that were before my time. And he's like, Gotti, you remember? And I'm like, I don't know how old you think I am, but <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in that part. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I think Asimenos is... He's a legend, and then I mean, he, he like literally brought up so many generations of people going out and yeah, 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 yeah. nice songs. So yeah, yeah. Would you like to pick another one? Maybe a bit more, kind of more profound. Okay. It's fun the random questions. I love it. Oh my goodness! I'm so happy you picked this one. Are you truly happy, or is there something missing? Oh my gosh, that's. As I am overwhelmed with happiness. Aww. So grateful that we're, this is a miracle. And the fact that you, you know, we're here speaking to each other, that we can see each other, hear each other, smell, stand. Yeah. If you're not, if you don't see the miracle in that, it's hard for you to see the miracle anywhere. So, mm. Without a doubt. And and it has nothing to do, again, with anything I own or achieved, but just this state of overwhelming gratitude uh, and almost feeling like just, why am I so lucky? You know, why? And, and just as my mom said, be. you know, my we mom said, wake up every day. And I'll say this in Greek for the Greek. It says, vale dostavrosu. And she put your cross and just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. So if there's one prayer, you can, if you don't remember mantras or prayers, just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I promise you, those three words alone will put you in a happy state. Yeah. I promise you that. Yeah. Oh, that's so lovely. Thank and gratitude. You. Thank you. gratitude. Just to have gratitude. Yes. That's another thing. I think many people aren't actually taught how to pray properly. It's you pray for Pray for that. If you lost it, pray for that. If you want something, pray exactly. for it. Exactly. But no, yeah. it's actually the first rule of prayer is just yeah. to say thank you. Exactly. Yeah, thank exactly. you for everything we have, for our bodies, for the food we eat, and just to be yeah. grateful. What a lovely, lovely way and a lovely question to end it on. One last oh, one. Oh, no, for you want you. another? One last one. <laughs> I want to ask you questions now. One oh, last we've one. got to do another last whole one. episode. Last one. You'd last be a good one. interviewer. Are you, oh, are you oh, I'm the that? one who yeah. reads it. Ask okay. Me. Okay. Ooh, this is a long one. How do you feel about global warming? Oh my goodness. And sustainability. Wow, that had to come to me. Think. Do, do you act to try to help? Ooh. Oh my goodness. This is kind of deep with the last question <laughs> closing out the podcast. Well, I should say if anybody's listening to this and ha doesn't know that about me, fully fully sent Rafael for more information. So yeah, for um. How do you feel about global warming? So and sustainability. So global warming upsets me a lot. Um, recently, we had obviously a lot of dust and um, in, in yes. Limassol and Cyprus. And I think all over the world, we've seen weird weather. Mm -hmm. And definitely here, nobody's talking about it. No one's like, oh, I mean, we have the Hamsini that always came to Cyprus, the dusty, the red sand, yeah. the 50 day sand from Egypt. It always, we got a little bit of that every year, but only at, a certain time of year and that was it and now it's becoming like the norm exactly. and people are fine with it and everyone's hiding behind their finger nobody's saying oh my goodness like th there's a problem and we have to act and everybody's waiting for the government to do something or yeah or they have this very selfish view of well we've just got to learn to live with it and it's fine um and it really upsets me and i think that um the biggest contributor to that is our our drive for superficial wealth and abundance, which we don't need. And I think it's tied into the old fashioned thing of, you know, meat is wealth and excess food is wealth and that's achieving something. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that um, in having, in breeding and eating dead animals, we're not only harming ourselves and our bodies, we're also not ingesting. I mean, when you ingest death, you can't expect to feel alive. Yes, death. Wow. And then wow. You, the, the world can't sustain these factory farms. I mean, in China, they've built the first multi-story factory farm where they have, I don't know how many floors, you know, 
tens upon tens upon tens of floors of pigs in in crates. And these are animals that are cleverer than dogs. They're, they can be pets. They can be I... pets, and they're amazing pets. They're much easier to train than a dog. They're amazing. They can do puzzles. They can, and they feel and they know everything. And it's not pigs. There's, they are individual animals that are having their babies taken from that are screaming in pain. And when they're killed, their adrenaline is at its highest. They're full of antibiotics. And there's just diseases there. Yes. And then we wonder why there's pandemics. Yes. And and all of this just really upsets me. And I just feel that everybody needs to wake up and, you know, smell the coffee and see it for what it is and do something. And, you know, definitely stop the single-use plastics, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yes, having a short shower can help, but it really doesn't make any difference. All of this is rubbish, you know. We need to, yeah, stop our single-use plastic, stop our reliance on our, on a, on unnecessary abundance. I love clothes, but try and be sustainable. Yeah. Try and source them ethically. Try and keep them, you know, keep them in your cupboard. I have clothes right. from like 90. I was laughing. I saw our mutual friend Walid the other day and I was like, Walid, I had this in 95. Do you remember? And he's like, no. <laughs> but yeah, like keep your stuff. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so do I act to help it? I definitely do. I feel very grateful that I'm in a position at St. Raphael Resort that I can try and make a change and try and showcase that big organizations can be sustainable and have a lower carbon footprint. And so, yes, radiate kindness comes with what's on our plate and what we do for the environment. So if you're listening, everyone, please try and do your part. Um, we had Let's Make Cypress Green founder Eleni um, on this podcast as well. Um, really interesting episode. So, yeah, listen to that. And, um, yeah, let's all try and do our bit. Yeah. Excellent. Well said. And, and you, Very and you well on said. global warming. I cannot articulate it as well as you did. <laughs> so you did an outstanding job. I, I guess I, I second everything you said. I would add that um, even prior to becoming a vegan or vegetarian, um, when you become more conscious within, mm -hmm. then, then it's a it's a, conse a consequence of that will be to be more um, uh, to eat less meat, mm -hmm. let's say, to be more conscious of the environment and the impact you have mm -hmm. on the environment, things you do, like recycling, I'm into to, to all of that. Um, but if everyone plays even just a small part, it's the beginning. And yeah. I, I'd like to think we are evolving. Mm -hmm. I would like to think so and, and that um, it will get better. See guys, Positive see guys. thoughts, yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> Alice, thank you so thank much. You. Everyone, Odyssey thank to the Heart is available now at St. Raphael Resort Book, uh, not bookshop, our, our souvenir shop, so you can get it here. And of course, um, for those listening from abroad on Amazon. So yeah, um, it's thank available there. It's so really reasonably priced as well. And it's just an amazing book. So um, it's good summertime reading. So thank you so thank much. Thank you, Farah, um, so much for all of this, you know, and what you do so and much. how you are. And I love the interview. And Thank you. Thank I you, really you, appreciate it too. Take care. Thank you, thank you. We hope that you're enjoying Hotel Talk. And I'd like to remind you guys, please, to click that subscribe button. It helps us more than you may realize. And any likes or comments that you can give us on any platform would be highly appreciated because it helps us get heard and more exposure. Don't forget to hop along to St. Raphael Resorts and Marina's website. Uh, join us on our journey with our Seahorse Club, where you can get exclusive offers and so much more. Or you can email our team directly, quoting Hotel Talk, to receive an exclusive discount on your next stay with us in Limassol, Cyprus. We'll see you all soon. And feedback is more than welcome. Thank you for being part of this journey.